Hey Strike Eagle fans, Natsu is back with you for another tutorial for the F-15E Strike Eagle by Razbam. Apologize for the long wait between tutorials, uh, combo of things, uh, vacation, Christmas, and uh, waiting on some stuff from the dev team to get complete. Uh, obviously as they add more and more capability to the, to the module, uh, all these systems are so integrated with each other, oftentimes you have to wait until one system is complete or at, a, uh, at least at a, a relatively decent finishing point before another module can be uh, can be completed. So everything really ties into each other, so that's one of the reasons why it took a while to get to uh, this system. So what we're gonna talk about today is the air-to-air -air radar. Uh, APG-70 in the Strike Eagle is, uh, is pretty unique uh, among jets. It shares a lot of common features with the F-15Cs, the uh, Albino Eagles uh, APG-63 uh, air-to-air -air radar. Uh, obviously it adds the uh, air-to-ground modes as well that the, uh, that the Eagle didn't have. Um, but a lot of the things are, are very similar to the, uh, to the APG-63, obviously with some enhancements. So what I'm going to do now is we're basically on pause. I'm going to take you through a quick tutorial or a quick tour of the radar itself. And then once we go through that, then I'll go ahead and let the, the system run. And we'll uh, start taking a look at some targets. So up here in the uh, upper left corner, this is your, uh, your basically your bra to the axe symbols. Uh, so as I move the cursor around, you can see that the bra... Uh, digital readout will change. So uh, this is basically uh, in relation to the nose of the aircraft. In addition, down here, this number is your bullseye bearing range to the act symbol. So as I move that around, you can see the bullseye stuff changes, uh, and the bullseye is up to the north, so it makes sense that we're that it's shown that the act symbol is south for uh, for about 80 miles. So those those two move in conjunction to each other, and they're both related to where the act symbol itself is placed. Up here along the top, the, uh, the channel is, uh, is the channel of the radar, uh, and you can change that. It goes basically through uh, A, B, C, D, and E. E is the emergency mode of the radar. We would use that in combat only, um, and we would do that for some specific reasons um, uh, just to make sure that those channels are not compromised. But typically when we train or even in kind of low-threat combat environments, we'd use the non-emergency channels. And then uh, the other aspect of the channel is uh, one through eight. So now you can set up uh, a way to deconflict with both your wingman and with other aircraft in the AOR by, uh, by choosing that combination of channels. So your wingman would all be on, potentially on all B channels, but you would deconflict by the number. And then other flights out there may be on other, uh, other, other letters. There's all kinds of different combos of that. And um, uh, it's basically for deconfliction. Up here, uh, E1, 2, and 3 are the electronic protection modes of the radar, the EP modes. I'm not going to get into the details for obvious reasons, but these are just various levels of uh, electronic protection based on what you think the threat is uh, there for that day. So they use various techniques for, uh, for, for uh, ECM protection. Up here in the upper right corner, this is the current radar range, and I can change that uh, with the act symbols. Notice there's no push button to be able to change it, so it's all based on uh, range bumping. So I can bump it out to 160, or I can bump it back down to 80, 40, 20, and then 10 is your min scope range for that. So this, again, that's all done by bump by range bumping with the uh, with the act symbol. I can also as bump in search. I can bump it to a um, 60 degree scan. It, the default is uh, 120, so it's in 120 right now. So that's 120 degrees across the bottom of the B-scope, and then if I as bump now, you can see the little balls, uh, the little azimuth balls will, are showing you that this is a 60 degree scan. So the center scribe is basically zero, and then the, the, uh, the middle scribe is 30 degrees, outside scribes are 60 degrees. And again, if you remember the concept of B-scope is it's stretching the bottom of the display out to, to be the full azimuth of the, uh, of the radar. Um, so we'll go ahead and go back to a 120 scan so I can show you that. So going down the left-hand side, COR is uh, not implemented. We'll skip that. Uh, the EL is now your uh, elevation scan or the number of bars that you're choosing. So you've got um, uh, up to eight bars. So there's six bar, eight bar, and then down to one, two, and three. And four. I'm sorry, it's even number. So it's one, two, four, six, and eight. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave it in four bar because that's a pretty common uh, long range uh, scan. So what that bar means, if you're not familiar with it, so you can see the, at the bottom the little carrot that scans back and forth. That is the, that's the uh, asthma scan of the radar and it's showing you currently where it's looking. 
If you look here, the little caret is the, is the current bar that it's looking at. So you can see as it ticks down, so it, it jumps back to the top, and then it ticks down each bar, so each time it hits the edge, it ticks down one until it gets to the end of the four, then it goes back up and, and scans that. Uh, so with the elevation, I can move the elevation of, the, of the, the, uh, the radar so I can look up. So now this is telling me I'm looking from 27,000 feet to 43,000 feet at the current act symbol setting. And then if I move that out, uh, that number gets bigger and bigger because obviously its elevation is based on where the act symbol is set. So out at 60 miles, uh, it's looking from 36 to 68,000 feet. As I move it in, that number gets smaller. Even though I'm still doing a four bar scan, it's all based on the axonal range. Uh, and then we can have a discussion on uh, Discord if you guys still don't understand what that means. Uh, I can draw some pretty pictures out. So typically in a, uh, in a long range scan, so currently we're in search mode. Uh, most people will, will know this by uh, RWS or range while search. Typically in Strike Eagle, we just say the word search. So we're in an 80 mile range. Uh, interleave scan so down here is the uh, is the current PRF so I can cycle that through high medium and interleaved and then that will talk about the uh, the PRF scan so what interleave means is it's alternating each bar is either high or medium and you can see right here it'll tell you which bar it is so I'm currently on a medium bar and when it hits the other end it should go high and then medium then high and so on. And it just keeps doing that back and forth. If I go to high, then you can see each of those uh, bars stay high. And same thing if I go medium, then every bar scan is gonna be a medium bar. So typically the setup is we're gonna be in 80 mile scope, a, uh, an interleaf scan, and usually the uh, long range scan is a four bar. And then as, as I go to a more of a short range scan, I'll go usually 40 mile or 20 mile scope with a six bar scan and uh, typically a, a medium only uh, uh, PRF for closer range maneuvering targets. So to continue on the left side, so frame store, this is how long the ghosted image is gonna stay on the, the, the radar. So if I have a uh, contact out there, I think I've got a, a tanker and an AWACS out ahead of me. So let's set that um, coverage so I can start seeing some people. Yep. So what this means is, is when the contact shows up, that contact will stay there for an entire frame um, uh, as it goes by. So a frame is the full four bars. So it has to go through one, two, three, and four before it switches to the next frame. And then that contact will fade out if it's not detected again. So this is really the frame store in search for how long it's gonna keep that ghosted contact. If I go frame store two, then it's gonna keep that for a full full two frames if it doesn't get detected again. If I go frame store zero, then it's gonna basically erase it until it sees it again on the next frame. So usually frame store one was kind of the common thing that we would use, but again, it's totally up to you and how you wanna use it. On the, the next button here is the uh, GMTR, so this is the ground moving target rejection. So this is basically bumps up the notch window in speed based on um, what you have set, so it, you limit the number of false targets. So if I go low, uh, this means it's gonna reduce the, the notch window to a very small number, uh, which means I'm gonna have a higher chance of picking up uh, ground uh, moving targets or clutter. If I go medium, it, it uh, narrows that down. I, let me rephrase that. On low, the notch window is the highest, which means I'm gonna pick up uh, more, um, uh, more ground clutter. If I go medium, it's gonna uh, narrow that down a little bit more and if I go high, it's going to narrow it down uh, a little bit more even then. And then chaff is the, uh, is the narrowest window uh, to, uh, to reject clutter. So typically we would fly around in chaff if we were up high doing, a, um, uh, uh, doing a, um, uh, an air-to-air -air mission. If you thought you were going to detect like slow-moving helicopters or whatever, you would probably bump this GMTR uh, window down a little bit because otherwise the GMTR chaff probably would uh, eliminate seeing helicopters or slow moving uh, propeller driven targets. Anyway, so there's specific numbers associated with that. I don't have them committed to memory, but we'll, uh, those, those will be uh, re uh, revealed in the, uh, in the manual by Baldic Dragon. Uh, SL is not imp implemented, so don't worry about that. We talked already about what the uh, interleaved means. Uh, range gate high is a special hybrid between, uh, uh, between um, medium and high. So 
If I go inter, uh, range of gate high, it's going to use kind of a hybrid uh, medium and high PRF. Somewhere in between that, but it's not really a very useful mode. We hardly ever used it. And then vector scan, notice as soon as I go vector, notice the, the sweep slows way down. And this is for detecting uh, long range, very low RCS targets like cruise missiles. So now you have a very slow scan to try to uh, pick up stuff at long range and low RCS uh, targets. The downside of that uh, very slow scan is that maneuvering targets uh, may not get detected as easily. So if you've got a uh, like a MiG who is uh, turning very rapidly, you might not be able to see that as easily. So this has a very niche uh, type of uh, type of use case for uh, what we use. The uh, the most common was the interleaved uh, mode. We would probably use that ninety five percent of the time for what we use. Uh, and then down here, uh, enter is uh, is a a way that we can program uh, the um, uh, L scan range and uh, um, uh, and other stuff to the to the target for the MRM switch. So we program so forward for the MRM switch, and then if we go into uh, short range search, uh, we could program it to a uh, to a smaller scope. I'm not going to go ahead and do that today, just to save time. So let's go back to uh, MRM. And then the final thing along the along the bottom is this is the current own ship ground speed, and this is the uh, we talked about that being the um, the bullseye, and then over here is your current uh, own ship true airspeed. So you can see over here up at the top this is the uh, the, the data for a target that I had previously locked. Um, that would be his uh, his uh, speed, his aspect, and his uh, current heading. We'll lock a target up here in a minute just to show you how that changes. So notice uh, one other thing I want to show you is when I'm when I have a, a target, let's say I'm in the 80 mile scope. This little carrot right here is telling me that you've got targets are detected beyond the scope range. So go ahead and bump out if you want to see them. So I can go ahead and bump out to a 160 scope, and I should now see uh, other targets out there. So right here, if I hover, I'm still in search. If I hover over a contact. If it has enough data, it will go ahead and give me the elevation of that target. So it's telling me that target is about 30,000 feet. If I go ahead and uh, hover over another target, that tell, it tells me that that target is about 19,000 feet. And it's doing this with what we call TWIS background processing. Uh, so it's using some internal uh, processing filters uh, to uh, go ahead and build kind of a track file before I even take a, a lock of that guy. Um, later on, uh, it, this is still a work in progress radar, so there's still some features to be added. Eventually, the uh, uh, what we call the hot cold target uh, feature will be added, where it will start giving you some rough aspect of the target even in search. Okay, that's it for basic radar modes. Uh, I took you on a tour of, around the radar screen and showed you how to work through the search modes. Uh, on future videos, we're going to talk about single target track, twiz and uh, auto acquisition modes and some general employment of uh, how to use the radar through search all the way through uh, final lock and, uh, and uh, missile shots. Anyway, this is it for me. NASA's out. I'll talk to you soon. See you. Bye.